begin to come up, you'll see the pavilion coming up on your left up here. And that pavilion will seat 1,500 people and has a rock wall <coughs> beside on both ends and a green room and a bridal room if someone wanted to get married there. But we'll also do a lot of Sunday services uh, out here during the summer. Uh, or we'll have some nights when we cook out around there and just invite uh, our guests, our members, to bring their guests uh, to that service. It, it has a, a bunch of grills on the other side, both large and small, so Sunday school classes could have fellowships around the pavilion. As you can see, a lot of construction, they're currently in the process of paving all this property. One of the things, when you're on this section here, the 40 acres I mentioned are the lower acres, and this 48, 42 acres, starting just beyond the cross and coming back this way, belong to another gentleman. His grandkids went to Sherwood Christian Academy, and when he saw us clear the other 40 acres, he called me up and asked me to come out, and he took me on a tour of this property, then handed me an appraisal for $465,000 that was all this property, this 4,000 square foot house coming up on our right, and he talked about how the academy had impacted his grandchildren and what he saw that we were doing and wanted to be a part of, and he told us if we'd give him $220,000, he would give the rest as a gift to the church. And so immediately this 40 acre sports park became 82 acres and incorporated the horse area that's over there beyond the house, the house and this other acreage. We passed two sand volleyball courts coming up on the left and this area right out here in the flat leading up to the pavilion is going to be a huge playground for the children. Let me go ahead and stop here. Back to your right is the house. That house has a series of offices in it. Some are for the ministers who are out here handling the recreation area, but we also give space there for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. They're housed in that house, as well as a foundation a president for uh, our foundation. Bus parking uh, is over to the right as well, and you begin to see four baseball fields over there, two of them are baseball, actually one is t-ball and one is softball. And they're currently building a scoring tower and a concession stand in the middle of there. It should be done in August. And back to your left, you begin to see the cross. Uh, we had a lot of trouble getting that cross through uh, city and county approval. Um, they said it was a sign, and so we had to go through a lot of red tape and point out the fact that it's 1,230 feet from the nearest road and so it's probably not a visible sign from the road and so um, it had to get some help but eventually that was approved. That's 110 foot tall, 28 feet down into the ground with 1.3 million pounds of concrete down under the ground right there. So it's if somebody ever comes to this property later they're going to have a hard time moving that cross. So the plan for that, you see the lights around the perimeter where it's lit at night, but it's also going to have a 30-foot perimeter pool around the outside of it. That'll be a, a fountain, but it'll also be a baptistry area. Our church and a lot of other churches don't have uh, ability for handicapped baptism, but that will have handicapped access. So again, another way that a lot of churches in our area We'll be able to use it in a great place for kids. Already, even though there's no water around it, that's a hangout place. When kids are out here fishing or doing other things, they always want to come up around the cross, and this is just going to make it more attractive in that area. Also, when this was just a bunch of weeds and um, very hard to navigate, especially from the lower 40 up through here, all during that time we've had periods where we came out here just set up a couple tents. Our members got out of their cars and just walked the property and hand wrote out their prayers for this property for the future. And we have thousands of those prayer cards that when that fountain is established, we're going to put in a time capsule with some other pictures of the progress here and the story 
and that'll be put in the base of that outside that fountain, uh, so the church can open it in 50 or 100 years and see that. Beyond that, uh, back to the sweat equity and probably the fun sweat equity uh, for the children, we wanted to stock that pond so that fathers and moms could come out, actually do some fishing with their children, and uh, so what we did. We took some huge PVC pipe, cut it in half, and we made about a 30-foot trough coming out from the water. And we brought in 3,000 fingerlings and let all the little kids in the church dip one out, put it in the trough, and watch it swim down into the water. So the little children in the church stocked that pond with the first 3,000 fish. And so on a Saturday now, you come out, and there's already uh, people out there uh, fishing. Uh, and there's about 3,000 catfish and 300 bass in there. So it's a pretty good sized fish at this point. Coming July 5th, the park will be officially open. This paving should finish this week or by next Wednesday. And then it will be open Monday through Saturday from 8 in the morning to 8 at night, with the exception of Wednesday when it will close at about 2 o'clock. And it won't be open on Sunday. And so already, in the Upwards program, we've seen that grow to where the season had just finished. We had over 500 kids involved in the program. So 500 kids and over 1,000 adults out here doing soccer uh, during that particular season. We're going to go ahead and continue to pull up this direction, see if we can make it out one of the other ways through the sports park. We may have to loop back through this way due to the paving. 